Good morning or good afternoon. Um, yes, I'm back with the usual update on products and, and where we are and what's new. Um, so three, three topics today, uh, an update on private VLAN closed user groups, uh, a quick explanation about the Microsoft Azure peering service, and last but certainly not least, an update on where we are with BCP 214. So private VLAN closed user group. Until recently, this is what this slide would have looked like. Now it looks like this since actually since I think yesterday evening, it is available on the portal um, for you to order. So, so those two products um, are available now on LON1, LON2, Manchester and Nova. So basically all of the LANs which are under uh, which are completely under our config automation, which was always the, the criteria that that these products we would only release on on um, fabric peering lands, which are fully under config automation. Um, so similar similar functionality, independent if it's if it's the uh, Juniper based platform or an an edge core based platform. They are they are very simple, straightforward layer two services. Nothing nothing too too special there. Um, you can you can either um, use your existing ports if um, if if it's the first of these services that you want on on these existing ports. We have to change the the config of the port, obviously from from standard as as by default ports are all configured as as plain access ports, and we change them uh, to trunk ports dot one enabled uh, ports. Or um, if you prefer so, um, you can. Uh, use dedicated ports for, for these services, depending on, on your use case. If you're using an existing port, we just move your existing peering service um, by default onto VLAN 100. Um, and it basically will use the, the remainder of the bandwidth um, for your peering service. Uh, you, can, you can order these with a bandwidth, anything between 50 meg and, and 10 gig. Um, actually, we, we recently had a request for even higher bandwidth um which there's nothing that that speaks against it um and it's available for directly connected members but also for connections members um depending on 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 your use cases <clears throat> how how do they look like very very simple no no surprises there private vlan so it's basically just a direct um uh, point to point direct layer to service between two member ports um, to different members. Um, by default, they're configured the same way as, as a peering port, so single MAC address. But if you want to, if you have a use case where you would want more MAC addresses um, to be allowed, that can be done as well. And they have a 1500 byte MTU, uh, same as, as your peering ports. Um, we are, we're looking into the options that we have to, to um, provide um, larger uh, frame sizes on on these services. We have some limitations, and I talked I talked about our plans at at the last meeting. We've come across some limitations, so we might have to to um, restrict that to dedicated ports, but we'll we'll cover that in in the future. But that is still in in the works. The way the the charging works um, for these is that basically member A orders the service um, and pays for the service. There's no no charge. For the other end of it, so it's the person who orders the the private VLAN who gets the the charge. Closed user group very similar, just instead of of um, just two members, it can be three or more, as many as many as you would want. And we basically build a, a layer two instance, which which links all of these um, uh, services together into a single layer two instance. Um, again, pricing wise, so it's the member who orders it, who pays for, for the actual service, bandwidth based. Anybody who connects to it or wants to, to be connected to that service um, just has a setup fee um, to, to, to cover our charges there, but it doesn't have a, a recurring charge for using that service. And, and that's basically the, the, the main use case that we see. It's, it's members offering their service for, for services for, for other members to to participate in, so it's it's quite quite simple. You you just go onto onto the portal, and I will cover cover the detail how, how you can actually order these services. Um, the if it's closed user group, obviously if it's private VLAN, 
you clearly it only makes sense if the same the same bandwidth the same speed at both ends of the service otherwise it doesn't really make make any sense so there's no choice there it's whoever orders it defines the the speed the bandwidth of that service for a closed user group there's no no real requirement that everybody is connected at the same speed the the it's basically the highest speed that you can can connect to into that closed user group is defined by the speed that that the owner of the service the person who has ordered it what whatever his his connection speed is but you don't have to connect at the same at the same speed um so it is it is available actually actually now on the portal um i think since yesterday um so you can just um go there you can now choose uh, until until uh, recently you could only choose lon one you can now choose the, the full lands where it's available on um a relatively straightforward <clears throat> order form that that you have um we ask you um you have the option to um to give the service a name which will which will help you to see it on on your invoices and on on the portal where you see the stats so you can give it a name and we'll we'll carry that that name over um, through our our systems um and you choose a port you can either choose an existing port as i mentioned before um or you can as part of the order order a new port um or select an existing port that we then convert into what we call multi-service port which means we change it to to dot one q and the the order form will show you if you have ports which are already um configured in uh, as a dot one q trunk it will show you these if not it will show you your existing ports and you can choose one to convert or it will allow you to to order uh, a new port as as part of as part of the the service when you order it and you tell us which vlan id you want and you give us the details for private vlan you give us the details <clears throat> of the member at the other end um, and as soon as we have the ticket the, the knock will then get in touch with the member at the other end and just um, basically clarify which port he wants the, the service to be terminated on um which vlan id he wants at, at his end and at the speed so relatively straightforward for closed user group it is slightly different since uh, we said there is the the difference between the person who is the member who's ordering the service who owns the closed user group so on the order form you have the two options either create a new closed user group or join an existing closed user group so this is the case where you create a new one Again, you can you can specify the name, um, um, a, a user friendly name. Quite from what we have seen from from existing examples, that members who offer uh, a service across this name it based on that service. Um, you give us an, uh, a contact, basically the authorizer, which we will check with if somebody else wants to join that closed user group, and the same way you select the port where you want it to be terminated with the the. Uh, with the same options as as before, an existing port, converter port, or a new port, and of course you define the bandwidth. Um, and if you want to join one, it's much simpler. You you choose the join the existing uh, an existing closed user group. You tell us the name, um, and and again you select your port um, bandwidth and and VLAN ID. Um, the once we have the order at the moment at at this stage where where it's still a manual process, obviously over time with, with all of the automation, um, these are services that, that at some point are going to be um, straight, uh, go straight through through automation, but we aren't there yet. So at the moment, it's a manual process. The knock will we'll check with the authorizer and if all okay, the, the service will get provisioned and, and um, the VLAN gets added into the existing closed user group. You, you have the, the usual, what you would expect. So on the portal, you will see um, the traffic stats on the individual services. There's a case of a private VLAN, you will see it with what's planned out here. Um, that would be the, the, the service name that you have given us on, on, uh, on the order form. Um, pricing is relatively, relatively straightforward, and it's the same pricing model for both private VLAN and closed user group um, um a one-off install fee and then a, a recurring fee which is based on the bandwidth of of the service um and they all come like like the like our usual ports come with a month's uh, one month's term so there's no long 
uh, no long contract on on this. That's all about private VLAN closed user group. Next topic um, is one of the one of the products which which form part of of what we call Links Cloud Connect. So a series of of um, services which which all all work around the different cloud service providers and that's something that we expect to evolve and and uh, and continue to grow over over the next uh, couple of months and years and and add more variety to it so this one is is a little bit um, different uh, compared to express route or, or amazon direct connect so this is what microsoft calls a true appearing service which kind of is a managed uh, a managed um, service to get peering directly with with Microsoft, so that's public peering. Obviously, the the um, it's uh, it's maybe a bit of a of a niche user case, but we we definitely see um, uh, use cases for that and demand for that, especially from the more enterprise type members who are who are joining joining links. Um, it, it really what it, what it does it, it it kind of it's kind of a priority peering service, and and also bypasses some of the the other requirements. Uh, Microsoft ensures that that um, the traffic if if you use this service, that the traffic will always use um, that connection as as the priority and and not reroute through others unless of course it's in a, uh, this connection is down. Um, you get additional um, data and, and traffic insight on, on the usual portal for, for your prefixes. There is monitoring capabilities for your prefixes. Um, and you have an SLA on, on the Microsoft part of the service. Um, so in the end, you get an end-to-end -end, um, service. And there's no, no minimum bandwidth um, that, you, that you have for this. Um, this is just a graph that I took from, from the Microsoft documentation. Um, and they are good old, good old term. Those of us who have been around the block a couple of times are good old cold potato routing. Um, so, so it it stays on the Microsoft network as long as possible, and and leaves the Microsoft network at at the, the nearest edge to um, to your connection. Um, in in this case, through the Azure Peering service. The, the way it is built, the way it the way it work, the way it works. So um, underneath it is basically closed user group. So we we will run, um, we are running uh, a dedicated layer two instance for for this service, which is only used for uh, members who connect to this service. We are running uh, to root servers um, as part of that um, of that closed user group, and we have. Um, to resilient connections uh, into Microsoft network, uh, Microsoft's network in, in London, um, which are also part of that closed user group. And any any member who who wants to use this service basically gets a connection um, into that closed user group. Um, if other members use it, will also get connected into that closed user group, establish appearing. Um, with the two root servers, um, which then also has the the peering with with Microsoft, um, the root servers don't don't do much. They just add um, dedicated communities um, onto the prefixes before they go on to to Microsoft's network. The only thing um, probably worth mentioning here is for for those of you who know the order process for. Microsoft's um, express root services where the order process actually starts at the Azure portal. So you as a member, as an Azure customer, you go into the portal and you, you create your express root service in for the Azure peering service. It actually works the other way around. So you first place the order with us. Um, we set you up on, on the root servers. We configure um, you on the, the um, Azure portal um, as, as, a, as a peering service, um, indicate the, the prefixes that you're planning planning to send, and then you can go back into, into the Azure portal um, if you want to sign up for the additional monitoring, the additional um, uh, data that you can get from, from them. So it works a little bit the other way around than ExpressRoute works. 
Uh, pricing again, relatively relatively straightforward. A one of install fee and then a bandwidth based uh, monthly recurring fee uh, that that in this case we kept um, relatively in in, in three um, speed categories there. That is uh, Microsoft Azure Peering Service. And last but certainly not least, as I said before, so BCP two fourteen and what we're doing with it. So I think everybody in, in, in this call probably knows what it is. This has been requested by members for, uh, for quite a while. Um, we know it has been, it has been implemented by, by other exchanges. And the main, the main reason here is to, to reduce the impact of, of any service affecting maintenances we do on our network and, and reduces the impact that that can have on, on your service uh, by basically getting rid of the issue that, that can happen due to BGP hold timers. Obviously, if, if we shut down uh, an edge route or a line card um, where your service is connected to until the BGP session has timed out, uh, that traffic, there is a risk of that traffic being uh, blackout on, on our network and, and not reaching your target. So in this case, um, using this method, we will um, basically force BGP sessions to go down by blocking um, TCP traffic, uh, port 179 BGP, um, ahead of us starting the maintenance with, with uh, enough of a time frame there that, that we're sure that all traffic has rerouted uh, through, other, uh, through other paths, either um, other, other peering port might be if, if if we do maintenance on one, one, it might fail over to your long two connection if, if you have so, or through other peering connections you have, or worst case, through a transit services, but, but doing that in a graceful manner um, without uh, causing that short period of time where, where traffic might be dropped on our network. Um, so it's currently in, in the last um, implementation stages. I think we've mentioned it before the way we work. So we work in, in agile-based uh, sprints. Um, we expect that the work um, is going to get finished um, over this and the, the next sprint, which are two-week two week sprints. Um, so hopefully towards, assuming, assuming nothing, nothing unplanned comes up towards the end of June, uh, beginning of July, um, we should be ready at, at, um, at our end. Um, you will have, if somebody really doesn't want us to, to do that for your services, you will have the option to go onto the portal um, and basically opt out of, of this. Um, why did it take us maybe a bit a bit longer to, to finally implement this? Uh, again, it was we, we were quite clear from the beginning, we don't want this to be a manual process. Um, we, we, we only want to do it if we're confident that it's as automated as possible and there is no manually, not, not engineers having to manually add um, uh, access lists or whatever on, on routers. Um, so it needed to be fully integrated in all of our system, which includes the tool that we use to generate track maintenances, generate maintenances, uh, avail availability to select what is affected. Is it a whole site? Is it a single edge router? Is it only a line card? Uh, make that as, as easy and straightforward and, and, and hopefully prevent any, any errors uh, due to, to human mistakes when, when doing that. Um, so all of that functionality that required uh, a certain amount of backend work that was happening anyway, due to all of the automation work um, that, uh, that we have been doing over, over the last um, couple of years really. Um, we wanted to have the, the option for members to, to go onto the portal and, and opt out of this. And as I said before, no, no, no manual changes um, involved by anything. So, yeah, I mentioned this. So the, the, the backend changes are all, all being completed, being worked on at the moment. Once it is released and to our production version of the tools, we'll, we'll provide uh, a two week notice so that anybody who would want to opt out of, um, of the service has the time to do so, go onto the portal and click a checkbox that, no, I don't want you to, to 
touch my my traffic at, at any point of view, any point in time. Um, we we don't think there's going to be a large number of members who, who will want to opt out, but the option will be there for anybody who does it. Um, and and only after that two week any any maintenance that will be service impacting um it will will make it clear in the actual maintenance announcements which go out that this is an this is a maintenance where we're gonna um uh, use bcp 214 ahead of the maintenance uh, and that might be at, at different steps so the tools the way they are built will will give the engineers the flexibility um if it's a staggered maintenance where where multiple um, multiple steps are necessary and, and only at certain times certain parts of the network might be impacted so the flexibility is all there but the maintenance notifications will will tell you obviously we're not going to use this for maintenance which are at risk since basically that would mean any at risk maintenance becomes a kind of a service impacting maintenance um, so it will only get get used for um, for maintenance where we expect uh, your service your, your ports to be impacted um and that's really all i i have open for questions if there are any um, there was a question but i think you've answered it um presumably there'll be an email notification of when bcp 214 will be used available you said a two yeah. week notice. yeah we'll give it two two week notice so that anybody who wants to opt out has time to do so 